Today's episode of the Outline Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering the listeners of this show one free audiobook and a 30-day free trial. You can redeem this by going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash outline pod or just click the link in the show notes below. All right, let's kick this thing off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The outline with Kevin Dwayne. Dwayne. Kevin Dwayne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The outline. Yeah, yeah. With Kevin Dwayne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, what's up? This is Kevin Dwayne, and this is the Outline Podcast, your weekly discussion of what's going on and trending in entertainment, the LGBT culture, and a piece of encouragement for everyone. So I was minding my business scrolling through my timeline on Instagram, looking at thirst traps and just lusting after fine-ass men. Then I see this picture of Jay Ellis, And it's a sponsored ad that says, Where's Lawrence? The caption says, Sign our petition to HBO pleading for Jay Ellis to return as Lawrence. Then share far and wide so that everyone who loves Lawrence can have their voice heard. We want Lawrence back. Where's Lawrence? Okay, so if you don't know who Lawrence is and you've been under a rock, and just not black he is a character on the show insecure by Issa ray which is an amazing show that is returning on august 12th i cannot wait like we have like a little less than two weeks till it premieres and i cannot wait to watch it but someone out there is spending their money to sponsor an ad to bring back a character that will not be on the show. So I thought this was hilarious for many reasons that I'll get to, but let's talk about this website first. So I clicked because I just needed to just see more. I just was so curious at the lengths that Lawrence Hive would go to to try to have his character added to the show when he's not needed, but whatever. So the website actually has a full explanation. And let me tell you, it has 9,661 signatures of a 10,000 goal. Like, this is some serious shit, y'all. It says, tell HBO to bring back Lawrence. It's been a difficult summer, but there's light on the horizon. Insecure is coming back to HBO for season three. The new season starts on August 12th, and we're counting down the days. But where's Lawrence? It looks like the rumors floating around for the past several weeks are true. Lawrence isn't coming back for another season of Insecure. How is that even allowed? Uh, bitch, because it's not your motherfucking show. But nope, let me continue reading. I'll get to my point later. This mess needs to be cleaned up. Not only because Jay Ellis has a huge and devoted fan base. (laughs) But also because Lawrence is an important and complex character that we need to see more of. It's time to get loud and bring him back. Sign and share this petition to make HBO bring Jay Ellis back to Insecure or give Lawrence his own show. (laughs) There's more. There's more. I just got to laugh at the fuck shit. I got to laugh. Okay. Okay. Lawrence was something new for television. Fuck boys are not new to television. He's a strong black man who isn't afraid to be emotionally vulnerable. Okay, so you guys haven't seen Queen Sugar either. Okay, cool. And uh, it doesn't hurt that he's pretty hot too, which is really the reason why y'all wrote this motherfucking petition. Let's keep it a buck. Y'all just think the man's fine. Let's just really point that shit out. If he looked like motherfucking Fred Sanford, y'all wouldn't be writing this motherfucking petition, but that's neither here nor there. Back to what it says. 
Over the past two seasons, Jay Ellis has portrayed the conflicted and realistic ways Lawrence has dealt with difficult and rarely explored issues for men such as infidelity, male friendship, depression, and toxic masculinity. We want Lawrence back on Insecure, but if he can't come back, then HBO should give him his own show. Sign the petition to make sure HBO hears from every Insecure and Jay Ellis fan right now. Last year, Insecure's Raw season finale showed Issa and Lawrence finally reckoning with their painful breakup, ending in an emotional fantasy sequence that imagines them getting back together, but instead of getting back together, Issa and Lawrence go their separate ways. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. There's a more button, but I'm not about to go through all of this. This is silly as fuck. Okay, so here's the thing. It's a motherfucking television show. Second part, it's not a crowdfunded show. This was not a GoFundMe. This was not a Kickstarter. This was not a situation where, you know, by you donating to the cause, you get to be an executive producer and have a say on how it's supposed to look and sound. This is somebody's creative work. This is the work of Issa Rae. So if she wrote this character out, the character has to go. It's not your show. If you don't like it, move the fuck on, but you have to allow room for other characters to be in there. Yes, they broke up in the show. Therefore, he gotta go. It's her show. The show is about Issa. It's not about fucking Lawrence because he's not fucking Issa anymore, or at least right now. It's about growth. It's about moving on. It's about growing up. We're trying to move away from insecurity. So if she doesn't want him in the show, that's just that. Like, I don't understand this. On top of that, have you guys not watched television before? Like, characters come back all the time. Like, in Sex and the City, like, it took Carrie the whole, what, six fucking season to finally get big? And he wasn't shit either. But there were never any petitions about, oh, big has to be in this season. Why? Because he's not fucking Jay Ellis. This is really has everything to do with how Jay Ellis looks. And because Lawrence High feels so fucking vindicated. And it's just like... Get out of here, man. This is ridiculous. This is more ridiculous than when y'all were mad because y'all didn't see condoms in fucking scenes of the episodes where they had sex. It's a TV MA show. It's not a fucking PBS sex special. It's not there to educate people on safe practices. It's a fucking show. And this is a weird ass entitlement thing that I don't understand why we have this. Go watch something else. Just go watch something else. This is the most silliest shit I've ever seen. And y'all pay money for this shit. Y'all pay money to actually create this and sponsor it like you can't force creatives to do what you want them to do this is like back in 2006 when beyonce released the video for deja vu fans were upset they really wrote a petition and thought that beyonce was gonna somehow add ear and listen to them and recreate a video are you fucking kidding me if y'all don't grow the fuck up i don't know if this is a millennial thing or what but it's trash stop this shit Stop this shit. You do not get to control what creatives do with their shows and their platforms. If you like it, cool. Keep watching. If you don't like it, don't motherfucking watch. But you don't get to sit at home behind your keyboard and decide that you're going to create a petition to get somebody to... You can't force someone's hand. Like, that's not going to work, ultimately, is what I'm saying. I just can't believe this shit actually exists. Like, I'm literally looking at a website right now on the petitionsite.com. And they actually created a petition to bring Jay Ellis back to the show. Now, shout out to Jay Ellis. I mean, I'm sure he'll be fine. He's out here traveling, getting other jobs and sponsorships and stuff. He'll be fine. And I'm pretty sure we will see him again on the show. I just, I don't really see it going on for other seasons without him appearing again. So it's not really that big a deal. But it's just like, what? Y'all really did this, huh, Lawrence Hive? Like, y'all really, yikes. And who's to say that another male character, because there's several other ones on the show, can't bring the same heat, can't bring the same death, can't bring the same concepts? Like, nah, this is crazy as hell. Y'all don't do this for no other show. Y'all don't do this for Queen Sugar. Y'all don't do this for Greenleaf. Y'all don't do this for motherfucking haves and have-nots. 
why is insecure at the base of this? Y'all don't do this shit for girlfriends. Y'all don't do this shit for Moesha. Like, get out of here. This is not your show. Watch it, enjoy it, or don't. That simple. But speaking of HBO, great fucking news, man. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of Kid Fury. And I honestly, I don't understand anyone who isn't. Like, if you listen to podcasts and you're black, it's likely that you listen to The Read. I just can't see how that's possible. Like, The Read literally led the way when it comes to black podcasts i mean that that's that may as well just be my opinion but people really weren't fucking with podcasts until the read popped up and all of a sudden the floodgates open i definitely love the read so i definitely love kid fury i love crystal but yesterday news hit on variety.com that kid fury is developing a show on hbo and Lena Waithe will be pro- executive producing it. So the Untitled Project is described as a surreal dark comedy that follows Greg, a 20-something sarcastic gay black man, aka Kid Fury, navigating adulthood and responsibility in New York City while struggling to wrap his head around his undiagnosed clinical depression. Like, my mind is exploding because this is so dope for the culture. Like, I have seen kid fury online just like many of you since the youtube days this goes back to like 2008 2009 and it's just amazing to see what sticking to your passion sticking to your creativity and just being consistent it's this is the end result like what you can actually achieve by just putting yourself out there so this is just monumental and it's the same with Issa ray like she was on youtube with um adventures of uh, awkward black girl and look at where she is now and it's just dope to see the time that we're in where if you just create stuff and put it out there you can really achieve a huge level of success and i think everybody has that type of glow up in them it's a matter of just tapping into it so i'm sitting here geeked for another show another representation on hbo like hbo is coming up like hbo is trying to like be like the next like kind of showtime with like the black shows like i'm like come through like i'm here for this shit so like i don't know i'm just i'm really really excited i feel like with kid fury it's almost like i feel like i know him never met the man a day in my life but i feel like that's like the homie and i'm just super super geeked about this show coming out i cannot wait to see like how it's developed i can't wait to see what the name of it will be i can't wait to see like just how everything is put together and the fact that it is a gay black male character and not to mention you know Issa Rae is also developing another show about a bisexual character so HBO is about to be more lit than it already is and I'm just I am super super geeked about this like this is a huge moment and I'm I don't know I just really really love Kid Fury I love the read I love Lena Waithe and it just seems like a good idea all around so shout out to him he's having the the best week ever i'm sure and um speaking of television kendrick lamar was on power this previous sunday and kendrick lamar has some pretty dope ass acting chops and i feel like i already knew that just from how he is in his music videos um i'm not sure if he's been in other television shows or movies please let me know i don't recall ever seeing him as an actor only in his music videos where he does like all the crazy characters and stuff but i always thought that was dope but he plays this character called laces which is um a drug abuser um who befriends um i can't think of 50 cents character's name but he befriends 50 cents character and helps him you know do some crimes and shit like that but you see this weird connection but kendrick really really bodied the role and in the after special with the um with the showrunner he was talking about if he he always mentioned he wanted to be on the show to 50 cent so 50 cent let the showrunners know like hey kendrick wants to be on the show so they asked him what kind of role he would want to play and he was just like he wanted it to be something that was opposite of who he is and so he was like he's like i would want to be a drug abuser like for sure and he mentioned that growing up 
he would always see these people like at the gas stations and on the streets and all around. And it's one of those things where, you know, these people are toxic and you know, they have a lot going on, but you build up a love for them because you see their humanity and you see them outside of like what they've been through. And so you have this weird, like you don't want them to get hurt and you kind of look out for them in a certain way. And so he wanted to embody that character. And he really, really did like Kendrick Lamar. Like you didn't see Kendrick Lamar in the role. You saw, laces and that's very very important when it comes to fine acting and also power i don't know like it's getting all these rave reviews by critics and i'm seeing all these uh quotes on this season but i'm i'm bored just like i'm i don't know it could just be me maybe it's not enough sex in the season i don't know but i'm just I just, I really just grit my, not grit my teeth, but I'm doing, I'm always multitasking during during the episodes. Like this last episode, I watched when Kendrick was on the screen. The rest of the time, I was scrolling through Tumblr and Instagram and doing everything else, still keeping up with what's going on in the plot, but it's just not exciting as it once was. Like, I'm just ready for everybody to die so we can move on with our lives. And that will just be that. (laughs) But whatever i hope to see more of kendrick lamar on the show he i think he did a great job as laces if you haven't seen it check it out i know there's a lot of people who aren't fans of power um season five probably ain't the the time to jump in because it's boring as fuck but definitely start from the beginning and see what the excitement used to be like and yeah that's all i got for that so moving on all right so y'all know i like to keep it 100 or at least i like to be as vulnerable as possible just to make this show authentic and to show you that like i really like i'm very introspective and i like to discuss what's going on internally because maybe it may trigger something in you and maybe you may have something in common with me or it make you feel seen i don't know but i like to share things as they happen to me so a little over a month ago, I was seeing someone. It wasn't a long time. It was just a little short, little period of time. Uh, we went on a few dates um, and we chilled a little bit. And here's the thing. Dude was super fucking dope. Like he still is dope, but he was amazing. Dude was vegan. Uh, he didn't fuck with religion the way I don't fuck with religion. We just had a lot of stuff in common. He was attractive, nice body, like cool as dude. And we hung out and it was cool. Now, for most people, they'd be like, oh, yeah, that's that's a perfect candidate to be in a relationship with and connect with. And I agree. He, he was def- a, definitely a great candidate for being in a relationship and a great person to get to know and, and stuff like that. But here's the thing. I had to be real with myself and realize that he wasn't the candidate for me and he wasn't the person for me. Though we had all these things in common, though I found him attractive, though there are all these things that aligned, there was a part in me that was like, nah, this still isn't it though. And I think that's just a part of being an adult. And I told, I was telling Wabi about this, you know, she's been on the show a few times and she was just like, she's like, that is the beauty of being an adult. She even said that she's like, that's growth. Knowing that something's just not right for you and being mature enough to say, you know what, you're good, but you're good for someone else and not me. And I had to struggle with that a little bit because it was one of those things where I was like, for a split second, and I've talked about this, I was like, I felt as though I was ready to be in something serious and something real. But then after going on a few dates and and then kind of feeling the implications of what that would mean, I was just like, no, nah, this ain't for me. Like, And then also, I just didn't have that certain kind of uh, spark that really hits when you know someone is for you. Like, yeah, we had all this stuff in common, but at the end of the day, I saw him as a future friend. I didn't see him as a future partner or a future lover, but he was amazing and he was great, but I didn't see him as a lover. I didn't see him as a partner for the long term. And I had to respectfully be like, you know what? No, you're great, but not for me. And that that is what it is. But it, it started making me think like, damn, am I really ready for a commitment? Am I really ready for a relationship if it comes my way? And I'm starting to think no. 
Like I find myself as I get older and there's studies on this too. As I get older and as I live by myself and as I'm single, I become very comfort with the peace of it all and very comfortable with just doing solo shit. And there's so many people out there who are dying for relationships and who want to be in committed uh, partnerships. And there's nothing wrong with that. Shout out to all of you. If that's what you seek, look around, um, continue to love yourself. And I hope you get exactly what it is you're looking for. But for me, I realized that I have moments of loneliness and moments of where I want companionship, but it's always short lived and it doesn't take much for me to get what I need and be okay again and be okay with singlehood. And I don't feel there's anything wrong with that either. We once again have these one size fits all ideals that we place on humans and saying, oh, you need to have romantic love. You need to have a relationship. You need to be married. You need to have kids. You need to have this. And honestly, it's just not true. Like love exists in so many different forms. There's about eight different forms of love, according to like Greek mythology. And, you know, there's agape love, which is the highest form. Then you have like mania love, which is like when people are obsessive as fuck. You have love between friendships. You have playful love. Um, you have love with family, you have affectionate love, like there's so many different types, but we always focus on romantic love only. And I feel like if you really are real with yourself, you shouldn't have to force yourself into a pairing just because it looks right or you feel it's the right thing for you. And that started getting me thinking and I realized that I could make I could make more. Okay, so like for instance, um, let me get myself together here. There are plenty of pros and cons with relationships. And I know there's people who can list hella pros for relationships, you know, companionship, someone who's there when you need them, um, is good for, I guess, sexual well-being, um, a confidant, a best friend, um, life partner, business partner, blah, 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 blah. There's tons of lists of reasons why relationships are so great. And I absolutely agree with you. But I also have my own list of pros and cons, more pros of just staying the fuck single. And this list is going to sound crazy as hell. It's going to sound crazy. And I know there's going to be a lot of shaking of the heads and a lot of like, mm, 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 and oh, he just want to be a hoe. I know it's a lot of that that's going to happen, but listen, this is my truth. And I just got to keep it 100 on what I feel about being single and it's not that fucking bad. So let's start. Number one, space. Like, while I don't mind having someone in my personal space for entertaining purposes, chilling, hanging out, smoking hookah, drinking, fucking all that stuff. That's great. But at this point in my life, it always has an expiration date before my energy is drained and I need to be alone again. Like, I just can't have someone under me 24-7. Like, it will be, at this point, I would have to really, really be in love with someone, really, really love being around them all the time. Or we have to have a really large home where I can have my wing, you can have your wing, or we have personal rooms that we can go, like, go to. But in my little 600-square-foot small-ass apartment, There's not room for two here. Like someone can be here for like a night, but that next day I'm going to be like, okay, you got to go. You got to go because I need to restore. I need to be by myself. I need to recollect my energy. I need to have my moments and I need to do all of this alone. And so I can't, I just, I'm not in a place to just entertain people 24 seven. And that's neither, that's neither friendship. That's neither romantic. That's neither family. It's literally everyone. Like Whoopi Goldberg said on a view, I don't want nobody in my house. (laughs) I just don't. And it's cool for a limited time, a couple hours. Like I said, you can spend the night and even that is tough. I have a hard time sleeping next to people. I really do. It gets too hot. It's so hot. Try again in winter, boo. Try again in winter. But like, go to your side, stay on your side, stay off of my side, get off of me, don't touch me, give me back the cover, stop trying to sleep in the middle. Like, I just, I can't 
do it. I just can't. When you have had a bed to yourself for a period of time, it's just hard to really just say, I'm going to share this. Unless it's like a California king. That's a different story. If you got a California king, okay, I'll fuck with you because we have room. You know, we come to the middle for like 10 minutes, cuddle, and then go back to our sides. But other than that, I need my own space. I need my own bed. It's just a way of comfort for me. And that's just something that I have grown to accept. Number two, accountability. I'm not interested in being accountable to a romantic partner. I don't want to check in. I don't want my limited availability and alone time filled up with someone else's plans. I don't want to have to answer to anyone about my behaviors and what I do and what I don't do. I just, I just don't want to do it. And it doesn't mean I'm not accountable to myself. It doesn't mean I'm not accountable to my responsibilities. It doesn't mean I'm not accountable to my friends because I am. But I don't want to be accountable to a romantic partner. I just don't want that added fucking stress of having to, having to say good morning, have to say good afternoon, have to tell you about my day, have to check in about this, have to do this, have to ask you. And you know what? I'll go ahead and tie that in to asking permission. I don't want to ask permission for shit. I don't want to have to be like, oh, well, I want to post this picture of me at the gym. I want to post this yoga pose, but let me make sure it's okay with my partner because I don't want them to feel disrespected by me posting this picture and I don't want to do this and then I don't want to have to say this or I have to ask them if this is okay. I'm just not interested. I'm not. I'm not saying it's wrong. If that's what you do in your relationships, if that's what you do, that's great. That's beautiful. I think it's all roses and lilies. Good for you. I'm not interested. I'm just not. I'm too grown. I pay my own fucking bills. I do my own thing. I'm good. I don't want to be accountable to a romantic partner. Number three, single behaviors. Living alone, I'm prone to do anything because I fucking can. If I want to play a song repeatedly for hours and days, I can. If I want to queen out in front of my TV saying, yes, bitch, to pose, I can. If I don't feel like folding clothes right after washing them, which is Pretty much every goddamn time I wash clothes, I have a bag of clothes in my closet right now. Now it's neat. The bag of clothes is in my closet, so it's not junky, but it's not, they're not folded. They're not hung. And I don't want to fucking fold and hang them. That's what the iron is for. I'm going to iron them when I wear them. And that's my business. I really just don't want someone who would be here nagging me about what I do. And telling me like, well, you got to put the dishes in the sink this way. And you got to put the dishwasher this way. And you got to wash it this way. You got to do it this way. Why do you do this? Why do you play this song? Can you get some headphones? Can you put some drawers on? Can you do this? No, the fuck I can't. I like to dance in the middle of the day. I like to do weird ass shit all day. I like to be goofy. I like to be serious. I have different moods and I just don't want anyone coming in trying to make me compromise on any of those moods. And I also don't want to make anybody else compromise on theirs. This also ties into why if you do end up in a relationship with me, we may just need to have separate spaces and just kick it from time to time. Let's just just, just kick it. Let's just kick it and go back to our spaces. It's just, it's good for my well-being. This moves to my next point, number four. I'm selfish. I'm fucking selfish often. This doesn't mean I'm inconsiderate. I'm very considerate, but everything has its limits. After a long day of work, the last thing I want to do is soothe someone else's issues for the sake of love and understanding. I'm trying to get over my own shit. I'm trying to care for my own shit. You are not my child. And I just, I, I can't, If I had a bad day, it's hard for me to put that aside to soothe you on your bad day. And I just don't want to feel obligated to do that shit. I just don't. But don't get me wrong, though. I can definitely be attentive, just like I mentioned earlier. But it it comes down to energy and space. Like, it has its limits, period. That's it. It just has its limits. I'm very serious about my own personal self-care. 
That sounds redundant. I'm serious about my self-care. And if there are certain things I must do to cope, I just don't want someone stopping me from doing those things just to please them. So if I had a long day and I want to come home, do about 30 minutes of yoga, sit quietly, listen to music. I just need that. Give me that. I don't want it to be a let's talk. You must talk to me right now. You must do this right now. And it becomes this kind of weird mind fuck that I don't want to go through. And I'll get some more of that later. So yeah, I'm selfish often and I don't see that changing. So once again, staying single. Next point. My friends will not drop in rank just because I'm in a relationship. I don't know where we got this idea that because we are fucking somebody on the regular, that our friends somehow get pushed down the line. Now, don't get me wrong. I do understand that when people get married, married, hear me, married, or in long-term commitments that involve paperwork and kids, absolutely. Those are your priorities. But when you're simply dating somebody and simply in a relationship with them, like boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, just some simple shit like that, that doesn't give you priority over my friends. It also doesn't mean I have to include you on things with my friends. Don't get me wrong, which I should probably name this episode, don't get me wrong. But I'm cool with inviting significant others with friends. Absolutely. I want you to meet them. I want you to hang. I want you to see what the vibe is like. But that doesn't mean I'm going to invite you every single time. It doesn't mean I'm going to drag you to everything. It doesn't mean I'm going to go to everything that your friends do. Because I may not fucking like your friends. You may not fucking like mine. So why are we forcing this upon each other? Like, why are we doing this? So I love my friends. Like, to death, I don't give the term out freely. There's a lot of acquaintances, but not actual friends. They're not losing their rank. They mean too much of me, too much to me for me to date someone and then be like, oh, okay, you're now my number one. It just doesn't work that way. Now, granted, if you and I build our relationship on a deep friendship, if our friendship is at the base of the foundation, that's great. Because I would love to be great friends with someone that I'm dating. I would love that first. And then and then decide that we want to be together. Because that's great. Because now you're a part of that. But just because you fucking me does not make you a priority. It takes way more than that. You actually would have to be my friend as well. No? Okay. Cool. Next point. Mind games are trash. I have no interest in playing them. I've never understood this. So, If I get into it with a friend, let's say Christina, Wabi, Charles, Raven, hell, they've all been on the show. If I get into one of them, if we have a disagreement, guess how long it will be before you find a solution? Not long at all. First of all, we don't get many disagreements. Second of all, we solve that shit right then and there. It becomes a, okay, you did this. I did this. I'm sorry they apologize or whatever we find a solution we move on we get back to being friends but for some reason in intimate relationships it becomes this acrobatic mind game it it ends up being a melodrama filled with passive aggressiveness and silent treatments and pettiness and i gotta teach you a lesson and then communication isn't as strong as it should be now i'm generalizing i'm sure there's some great communicators out there That's wonderful. But oftentimes when intimacy is involved, people communicate like shit. Like it's trash. And it's just, who wants to go through that? Not me. Also, why I feel like I should stay single. There's that. Next, being a black gay male, it provides a very unique experience where I have my necessities covered. And what I mean by that is this. A lot of stuff comes down to gender role. And I'm ne- I've learned what a lot of sex, not a sex, uh, what a lot of heterosexual relationships and even with uh, gay relationships who like to bring in gender roles of who does what, a lot of relationships are based off of what people can do for one another. And that's beautiful. That's great. That's cool. But 
in my rare unique situation i do everything anyway i'm i'm the breadwinner in my home because it's just me i go to work i have the side business i pay my bills okay I also climb the ladder to do shit. I kill the bugs if they if they're around. I fix things that need to be fixed. But on the flip side, I cook my meals. I wash my clothes. I do all these things. Now, granted, if I have someone here to assist in stuff like that and we assist each other, that's wonderful. That's great. But not a necessity. And... It's not even a matter of protection because I can protect myself and I can, I have friends that I can be vulnerable with and I have, I have family, I have people that I can, I can do different things with. And then on the other, in the other hand, I can fuck whoever I want to fuck. So it's just not, romantic love is not a necessity. It's cute. It's very cute. It feels good for the first six months. Is you know your heart flutters. You know commitment looks good. Ideally, it's beautiful in music videos and movies and television. But as I get older, or I won't even say as I get older because I don't want to make this seem like it's an ongoing thing. But at this point in my life, I just don't. I don't want to give up anything for it. I just don't. But I do know that life changes so quickly and things happen fast and anything can switch up final point before i close out sex all right so when it comes to sex is this like i know with me i'm very seasonal with my sexual activity i will have like a summer of sex and be like okay i'm fucking everything all the time whenever i want and then i'll have a moment where i'm like okay i'm tired of fucking and then i won't fuck i'll be celibate for a period of time I don't want to feel like my body belongs to someone else. Meaning, I don't want to feel like if I don't want to have sex, I have to have sex because they want it. And I also don't want them to feel like because I want to have sex, they have to have sex if they don't want it. And I know that there's ups and downs of relationships where that's going to happen, but I just hate that shit. Like, there's nothing worse than being horny and then being committed to someone and they don't want to have sex on the flip side there's nothing worse than not being horny and they're like humping your fucking leg and you're just like i'm just not in the mood and feeling like guilty because you don't want to have sex with them like that's just trash too as a single person i am fully in control of that i get to have sex when i want to and i get to chill the fuck out when i want to and i don't know that's just mad beautiful to me and i know This list probably sounds negative as fuck, but it's my truth. And I'm just, I'm not in the space to give up my freedom right now. I'm just not. Like, I'm learning that being single is actually not that fucking bad. Like, it's peaceful as hell. Like, I'm not waiting for anyone's calls. I'm not waiting for anyone's texts. I don't have to check in. I don't have to play mind games. I can fuck who I want to fuck. I don't have any weird ass um, shaming things about my behaviors online. I just, it's nice. It's wonderful. And I don't know why it's not promoted more. Like, what the hell? Like, and I know that this is not everyone's story. There are people who are hopeless romantics out there. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's great. Keep doing you, boo. Find the love that you want. It won't be in me, but there is someone out there who wants what you want. And I think that's beautiful, but don't shit on those who would rather do it solo. I don't understand why single, single people are seen as such a threat to society for doing their own thing and just saying, you know what? I prefer peace. I prefer my own control over myself i i actually don't want to compromise now i have to say this too there are many benefits to being in a relationship do not want to denote that like relationships help you grow as a person they grow you they make you better because you learn how to compromise you learn how to see things from another perspective but so do friendships so do family so does life 
You know, it happens. And also, if you've never been in a relationship, I definitely recommend trying one out if you if you if you're blessed enough to i've been in relationships before so i know what it's like so it's not like i'm missing out on an experience but at this point i'm just enjoying being single at this point right now but 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 anything can change i can meet someone today and probably fall in love with them and be in a relationship. This isn't a forever decision. This isn't a life sentence at all. But what I'm saying is right now, I can list more pros of being single than I can for being in a relationship. But it all can change. It all can change. And that's the beauty of being an adult. That's the beauty of evolution. And that's the beauty of moving with life as it comes because anything can change and honestly i challenge it i want someone to come into my life and make me say you know what i do want to commit to you i do want to be with you i do want to have sex with only you i want that to happen i would love for that to happen because that's awesome and i love that we have the freedom to change our minds Outside of all the reasons why we choose to do whatever it is that we do. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to the Outline Podcast. Please share on your social media. Please tag me as well. Use the hashtag, the Outline Podcast. And love you all. Make sure you guys leave your reviews and ratings and comments. And I'd love to hear hear your thoughts. I'm sure there are a lot after this show. but. I appreciate the support. Talk to you all next week. Peace out.